This is my digital audio tape Walkman, which I fixed up in a previous video, and it's been working pretty well since then. So I was having a look at the digital I.O. port on the side, and thinking, well, it might be interesting to hook this up to my computer and see if I can back up some data onto it, as though it was a tape drive. There are many reasons why this is wrong and shouldn't be done, so I thought I'd explore them and see if it's even possible to actually do this. And that's what this video is going to be about. This is the tape I'm going to use for the backup experiment and this is a digital audio tape, just a standard one. And if I wanted to back up onto this sort of tape the proper way, I'd probably be using one of these tape backup devices. These plug directly into the computer via a SCSI port and you can use these sorts of tapes to back up data. When you're using these, the system has been rebranded as DDS, Digital Data Storage. Okay, back to the wrong method. If I back up only data onto this tape and play it back in my audio Walkman, it will just sound like white noise. So I'm going to do something a bit different and embed the data into sound files, producing a tape which plays music, but also has data such as some ebooks, images, and even small video clips embedded directly into the music. Usually this is called a steganograph recording, although I'm not trying to hide data, rather produce a tape with two functions simultaneously. I did do an initial encoding test using a program called DeepSound from jpinsoft.net. It's linked below. I took a recording of silence and tested the three options that DeepSound offers. High quality sound is 12.5% data. Normal is 25% data and 75% music. And low sound quality is half data and half music. I've settled on the 25% as the best sound quality with a decent amount of data encoded onto the tape. For the audio, I've chosen a 44 minute radio play called What's Rangoon to You is Grafton to Me. It's a 445 megabyte audio file which I'm adding 110 megabytes of data. I don't need the encryption option, so in deep sound I'll be leaving that switched off. As part of the initial test, I'm going to burn the audio to CD and play it back in a regular hi-fi CD player. So I'll put our blank CDR in and get that burnt. And through the magic of editing, the burn is complete. And look at that, it's already labelled. Done. I can't seem to hear any hiss when I'm playing the CD back on this standard audio CD player. Okay, I put this into my computer and ripped the WAV files and sure enough, the data can be recovered using deep sound. Unlike CD-ROM, which uses Reed solomon error correction, an audio CD has less ability to detect and correct errors. If there is a read error, when playing an audio disc, the optical drive will attempt to correct the errors, and if it can't, it's going to guess what the most likely sound is. This is okay for music, but no good for data. Interestingly, CD-ROM also has the ability to save data in this way without Reed solomon error correction, just like audio CDs. It's called Mode 2. This enables things like video CD and picture disc, in which you won't really notice any guessed pixels and allows 800 megabytes of data on a 700 megabyte CD-ROM. Okay, with all that sorted, it's now time to actually record onto this digital audio tape. This format uses the same error detection and correction as a CD does, so as long as we get all the bits straight, and there's no errors when playing it back, it won't try to guess the bits and the data should remain intact. 
going to connect this up to my computer now and do the recording. Most motherboards have a Sony Philips digital interface that they use for digital sound output, otherwise known as SPDIF. And this input here is almost SPDIF compatible. The difference between this one is that it uses 5 volt signaling and SPDIF uses half volt signaling. Uh, fortunately I have the cable here to do it. So this will do the level conversion and we'll get this set up to the computer now and we'll start the recording process. The hardware connected, it's time to play the audio and record onto tape. Most modern operating systems use digital signal processing, especially for their volume mixing, hello windows, and they alter the bits so we're going to have to bypass all of that if we want to pass the data perfectly out the SPDIF output. So I'm using a highly customizable audio player called FUBAR 2000 and there's a plug-in available which should bypass all the digital signal processes as long as I leave the volume control alone all the bits should pass through unchanged. Okay, the recording is complete. I now have on this tape music that I can listen to of a radio play and in the background, in the hiss that I can't really hear when I'm even playing it back, is all the data that I've backed up onto the tape. Now comes the question of how can I be sure that this was a successful backup? So I'm going to have to work out a way that I can actually recover this data because that's the best way to test to see if there is actually a successful backup done. And that is going to be left for the next video. I was just waking up when the front tyre went. At the same time a horse appeared, the headlights blew and the horizon came through the windshield. I kissed Earth a kit and left the road like a jumbo jet diving into a swamp. Sometime later I regained a level of consciousness more ugly than the one I'd just left. I'd seen some strange movies on the inside of my eyelids again and now I was wide awake, but I couldn't be sure.